No, there seems to be an issue. All right, let's uh, get online. Let's post our link to the Twitter so that our friends can join us. Okay, uh, let's share the topic as well. Uh, just give me a few seconds, although I was here already. Uh, yes, and today we are actually starting our second book of the Longman series. Uh, this second book is... There oh. seems to be an issue. All right. Let's just post it. Oh. Why is it not working? Okay. Post. All right. It is posted. Let's just stop it. And we begin with our uh, new book, The Longman Academic Writing Series. We will try to race the books from now on, uh, just to make sure that we finish uh, them as easy, as fast as possible, and cram. Uh, more in oh, with much m much much more ease and get the books and to leave the unnecessary uh, topics which would not benefit us otherwise that much. And so, without further ado, let us begin. I aim to finish uh, a chapter of the book uh, in a day. Let's see how much uh, how will we do in this uh, first class of ours. So this first uh, this first lesson will be Longman Academic Writing Series Book Two, the Chapter One. Okay, so here there are just let's give a preview of the book. So chapter one, we will be describing people again. The chapter two, giving instructions. The chapter three, describing with s space order. All right. Uh, stating reasons and using examples. The chapter six is expressing your opinion. And there are like uh, six chapters. So this means if we are successful, we can finish this book in six days. Is it possible in a week? Let's find out. If not possible, at least in 12 days. We will make maximum uh, time limit for this is like at, uh, two lessons per chapter or m one lesson. One is the best, two is the max. One is the least and two is the max. So we will go. Let us begin. The chapter one of this book is... <coughs> so before we begin reading uh, this book, let's please not forget to subscribe to the channel so that... Uh, so that it uh, we can get motivated, both of us, uh, to make more videos and to watch more videos and make in things interesting for us. So now describing people. Uh, it is uh, really important for us to know how to describe a person. 
describing another person that somebody may we we might come uh, to introduce somebody our friends to someone else so we should know what characteristics of the person which we are talking about again in this chapter we will learn use questions and note taking to get ideas for writing identify the the three parts of a paragraph okay use correct paragraph format recognize subjects verbs objects and complete sentences use six rules of capitalization okay so the most important thing is here the capitalization we will be learning this is very important and the three uh, parts of the paragraph that we have we already know this is the topic sentence uh, the body and the sub those are the supporting sentences and then the conclusion those are the main three parts we already talked about but the rules for capitalization are very important right revise and edit a paragraph so that is not very new to us <coughs> okay so we have come each person in a family is unique <coughs> Can you think of a different word to describe each person in this family? So these are all uh, okay. So she's um. I I think this one is a middle child. This is the father. This is their son, and uh, this is the elder daughter, or is it? No, this is the eldest daughter, that is the mother, and this is the, these two are the middle child. Okay, let's see. This is the youngest and this is the middle. I think so. So we can say this, uh, this person is, he has a mustache and he's fat, <laughs> the, the father. Okay, the son is young and athletic. Okay, the mother is beautiful and the girls are also happy okay so they, we describe them gave them some subjects use your questions from part B to interview a classmate to t take notes ask some questions to clarify okay where is our part B fourth I think we have lost, uh, we have lost uh, uh, one page is lost here, I suppose, yes. Yes, this is one second and third is not existing at all. And then we have come to four. Okay, I just got to know the book, so... Let us go on without those two now. What is your name? Where are you from? And Sante Vol Verde. And where are you from? Miku Khan, Mexico. Michu. Khan, Mexico. So, organization. A paragraph is a group of related sentences about a single topic. The topic of a paragraph contains one and only one idea. A paragraph has three main parts and they are, they appear in this order. Topic, sentence, the supporting sentences or the body and then we have the concluding sentence so they come in the order first the topic then the supporting sentences and then the um, concluding sentences so the topic sentence uh, names the topic and tells what the paragraph is about this sentence is usually first sentence in a paragraph 
the middle sentence in a paragraph are called supporting sentences or the body. Supporting sentences give examples or other details about the topic. In some case, they might even tell a story to illustrate the topic sentence. The last sentences in a par sentence in a paragraph is usually the concluding sentence. The concluding sentence often uh, restates the topic sentence in a different word or summarizes the main points. So yeah, we already talked about this one as well already. But uh, since again, so this is the first of the paragraph, the top of the paragraph parts. First, the paragraph is just about one topic. You cannot add different two, three ideas in one. Uh, if you're talking about about a topic, uh, if you if you talk if you're making a paragraph, you rather uh, talk uh, like just about one topic. Do not add two topics there because it doesn't make sense. The you things will not work out very well. It can get mixed up and lead to people not understanding you. Uh, the clarity what what I mean is what I'm trying to explain here is that clarity of the uh, topic of the paragraph is uh, been lost if we are talking about two different topics in the same paragraph It should be clear and concise. The middle sentence of or called the supporting of the body and All right, uh, sorry. The last sentence we have is the paragraph, usually concluding sentence. This, uh, this con the concluding sentence often restates the topic or summarizes the main points. So we can say a paragraph is just like the, like a sandwich. The two pieces of the bread are like the main topic sentence and the, the concluding sentence and the supporting ideas are all the other ingredients inside these two or in between these two rather uh, the writing models describe two people writing describe two people writing model one is about a teacher and writing model two is about someone's best friend work with a partner or in a small group read the model then answer f the questions so we will read this paragraph Mr. Robinson Mr. Robinson my first great teacher was an important person in my life I was only six years old, but she taught, okay, I did I read it, Mr. Mrs. Robinson, sorry. Okay, she, she taught me a valuable uh, life lesson 
in the school in my count in my country children usually learn to print before they learn to write in cursive script like handwriting Mrs Robinson didn't believe in printing she thought it was a waste of time she taught us to write in cursive script from the first day at first it was hard and she made us practice it practice a lot Uh, that made me angry because I was very good at it. I wasn't very good at it. I remember filling entire pages just with capital O's. I don't think I could ever learn to write beautifully, but Mrs. Robinson was patient with me and told me to keep trying. At the end of the year, I felt very grown up because I could write in cursive script. I was proud of my new skill. Mrs. Robinson was important to me because she taught me a value of hard work. So we see here which sentence gives more information the topic sentence or the concluding sentence so let's see miss this is the topic sentence all right so this is the topic sentence from here uh, till Till here, this is a topic sentence, and this is Mrs. Robinson. My first grade teacher was an important person in my life. I was only six years old, but she taught me a valuable lesson. Now, so okay, I had missed. Okay, so this is the topic sentence only. My f Miss Robinson, my first grade teacher, was an important person in my life. So important person in my life, and she taught me va the value of hard work. Now this we compare these two ones. So Mrs. Robinson. Uh, sorry for these <laughs> lines. They are. I'm. I'm drawing a tree here. Sadly, let's erase them. So Mrs. Robinson was important to me because she taught me the value of hard work. What information? She said she was my first my first grade teacher here she hasn't told that and was important in my life and she was important she has mentioned it again but she told me the value of hard work which was added from this next sentence so which one does give more information the topic sentence or the concluding sentence i think it would be uh i think both of them are giving equal information how many supporting sentences does the paragraph have? How uh, how do they support the topic sentence? Do they give example or do they tell a story? So let's see how many. We have one. We have one sentence here. Uh, 
one one sentence in my country in my in the school in my country okay so this is another so one we can say two let's let's like count them at the end of the stops three at the end of the full the periods we will just count the periods and those will be the number of sentences one two three and this is four Okay, so this is here again, five. This is six here. This is seven. And this is eight. And this is nine. Right, so there are nine sentences, and how do they tell? They are to they are not giving an example. They are telling a story. So they are telling a story. As you saw on page four, as well, a well-organized paragraph need to have topic sentence, supporting sentences, and concluding sentences. In addition. It needs uh, to use correct paragraph format. In this section, you will learn about correct paragraph format, and then you will use it in a short writing activity. In the academic writing, instruction requires instructors require students to use correct format for paragraphs. Look at the guidelines and models for end written and computer written work. Your instructor may have requirements to be sure to follow them. Page format for handwritten work. The paper use 8 by 1 inch by 11 inch aligned paper with three holes the holes should be on your left side as you write write on the side on one side of the paper only the ink use black or dark blue ink only do not use pencil the heading write your full name and in the upper left corner in the wide underlined area at the top of the page under under it write the course name and number below that uh, write the date of the, the date the assignment is due in the order month day year with a comma after the day. Uh, the title. Center the title of your paragraph on the first line, the paragraph. Uh, the paragraph. Skip one line and start your paragraph on th on the third line remember to indent the first word about uh, 1 by 2 inches from the left margin indent means leave some space at the beginning of the line margins leave 1 inch margin on the left and right side of your paper and also leave one inch margin at the bottom of the page uh, 
You are teaching me use these empty spaces to write comments to you. Spacing. Leave blank lines between each line of writing. You, you and your teacher can use this space for correction, comments and revisions. So here it is. Here is this the sample for uh, the sample paper that you may use. It is like a nafor size sheet. Uh, we write it like this. So April fifteen twenty. So th this is the American uh, date. This is the American date, of course. Uh, this is not used uh, anywhere else other than America. Uh, elsewhere, we use day, month, and year. So write D M Y. And you see these are the three whole ones. So that is the topic. These are the uh, here the your credentials, the English subject and the date. And you indent the first uh, the first line. You have to give a space here like one inch from here and one inch like from here at least leave uh, lines in between empty lines like this so you can comment your teacher com can comment and use corrections here and so this is a paragraph it's uh, how, how it should be written for your school paragraph Okay, for work done on the computer. So the work done on computer is again uh, a full size sheet. We do we use like centimeters in. Uh, that is the twenty one by. How many? Uh, Eleven is. Inches. Uh, So you can convert the inch and the the inch and inch to centimeters. That was twenty a full a full sizes. I think twenty one. And uh, okay, let's search. A four size in centimeters. So it's twenty one by twenty nine point seven. 21 by 29.7 centimeters. Uh, the front use the standard font style and size, such as Times New Roman font, 12 point font size. Do not underline. Do not use underlining, italic or body. So the heading. The heading. Uh, you write your full name and to uh, f the upper left side again it's everything the same but it's just computerized uh, and on the same line type the course number and on the third line on the next line type the course number on the third line you just type the assignment uh, is due the date the assignment uh, type the date and the assignment due order month day year again a comma after the day the same thing the title skip one line and then add a topic in the center and you can use centering you can center it the paragraph skip one line and then use again indent and then try typing in the next line indent the first line and again the same thing uh, one inch from there, one inch from another side. Uh, okay. 
at the beginning uh, using the tab key so indent leaving the space between you can you can set the tab about 0.4 inches which gives you an indent of about uh, five spaces the type the return in, in margins one inch to left and right and double space your paragraph spacing to so double space your paragraph it is like this it's just about leaving like you just double space it this is one inch this is one inch that's whatever is written this is the topic sentence here is a classmate in the first line you type is indented pressing tab key uh, in organizing page 4 you learned that paragraph is a group of related sentences about a single topic now you will look more closely at sentences okay so sentences a sentence is a group of word that contains a subject and a verb and expresses and expresses complete thought a sentence begins with capital letter and ends with a period or a question mark a sentence may also end with an exclamation point but in academic writing most sentences end with a period okay here is a sentence is a graduate is a graduate student he, it is hot today he looks mad are you ready who is there so these are all sentences so we have the subjects the ishiet or subjects there the verb as looks or as whose these are the verbs uh, of course there the who is not but the is whose is the uh, apostrophe s is the verb it's a contracted form of the verb as uh, like when I finish when I finish my education when I finish my education I will work for my uncle okay the thought is not complete the verb Here are some co some common errors which uh, so these are uh, some common errors which students make in writing so there is no subject is very trustworthy he is very trustworthy is very trustworthy is incorrect if you are not using a subject so there is no verb if you are not using a verb the uh, supposedly the instructor strict the instructor is strict is intelligent okay so is is the verb okay the, the thought is not complete when I finish my education when I finish my education then what I will work for my uncle uh, so that makes it uh, complete and this is a correct sentence again then now let's see the exercises okay work with a partner read each group of words and write is sentence or and is not a sentence is very hot today what is very hot today it is not known so it is not a sentence it is very hot today my nephew classmate from Brazil this is in is not sentence he speaks three languages fluently. This is sentence. Is very. This is not sentence. Hurry up, please. So this is a sentence. We use it. Uh, he wants to start his own business. Yeah, this is a st sentence. He isn't married. He is not married. So this is also a sentence enjoys music especially pop this is not sentence because there's no subject 
Don't send text message in class. Don't send text messages in class. So yeah, this is sentence. So we do say that do not send text messages in the class in class. The book expensive not sentence. Go to the course website. This is a sentence. Okay, so go to the course website. Is this a full sentence? The idea feels incomplete. Go to the webs webs uh, go to the course website and then what? So this is the idea not complete. This can be a sentence as well sometimes. So if the idea is spoken out so spoken up about before. Supposedly you ask, "Oh, where where did you get this our this own work of us from?" The teacher hasn't shared it with us in the class. So your, your class says, go to the course website. Your classmate says, go to the course website. So you go to the course website and find it out. That time only, this can be, but it, the context has to be known before. Uh, so since it is not known and it's a standalone sentence here, it's not, not a complete sentence. In my opinion, you can have your own opinion, by the way, uh, because here I'm also reading. I'm casting my reading online. If you find it helpful, uh, well and good, otherwise uh, you can write corrections as well here. We are learning together and you must uh, verify everything before uh, taking it for granted. Do not take my work for granted. Do not cut anything uh, from my side because uh, I'm not responsible for it. I'm learning here. I'm not teaching. I'm studying and casting my studies online. All right. This is subject of verb and objects. So we have here as you are uh, as you have already seen page 14. Sentences in English need to have a subject and a verb. Some sentences also need subjects. In this section, you will learn how to recognize these three parts of a sentence. This will help you edit your writing. The subject tells who or what uh, the sentence is about. It can be noun, Diego, college, student, a noun phrase or a Subject pronoun are you, he, she, it, we, or they. Okay. So these are subjects. Subjects can be nouns or they can be the pronouns. Mark, uh, Mark lost his keys. Mark is the subject. Who lost his keys? Mark. The cat. What, what chased the mouse? The cat chased the mouse. Socks and tennis are my favorite sports. What are my favorite sports? Socks and tennis. So there are two kinds of verbs. There are like we have action verbs and we have linking verbs. Mark lost his keys. This is the cat chased the mouse. So there are action verbs. Action verbs are like such as losing, chasing, living, speaking, going, or coming. Okay, so these are lose, chase, live, speak, go, come. Mark lost his keys. The cat chased the mouse. My family lives in two-bedroom apartment.
uh, there are two kinds of okay so we are at the verb so there are linking verbs linking verbs are uh, the, mo the co most common linking verbs are be verbs or vb become look feel seem smell sound and taste Again, okay, linking verbs do not express action and state they connect uh, the subject of uh, the sentence to the information about the subject. For example, linking verbs can connect subjects, uh, the subject to another noun that tells how, that tells you who or what the subject is or to an adjective that describes the subject. The most common or like linking verbs are be, become, look, feel, seem, smell, sound, and taste. Socks and tennis. Socks and tennis are my favorite sports. So it is linking these two are my favorite. I feel lucky today. The the air smells fresh. Something sentences, some sentences, um, but not all of an object. The object receives the action of this of certain action verbs. It can uh, it can be a noun. San Diego college student. A noun phrase, an object pronoun, me, you, em, her, it, us, or them, or even a possessive uh, pronoun, mine, yours, is, ours, ours, theirs, to find an object, make questions by putting whom or what after an action verb. Okay, so Mark lost his keys. Lost what? His keys. He is an his keys is an object. His girlfriend found them. Girlfriend. <laughs> girlfriend. <laughs> okay. His girl friend found them found them found what them them is an object okay so the cat chased the mouse chased who chased what the mouse the mouse is the object writing tip certain verbs called transitive verbs must have objects some of these are Boy, gave, have, like, love, need, owe, oh, place, put, s spend, and want. They need some money. I don't want it. Okay, let's do talk about... Something interesting. Let's talk about these verbs with our uh, co-pilot. How many types of verbs are there in English? Like if one is in, one is action verb. Searching for types of verbs in English. There are several types of verbs in English. Here are some of them. Action verbs. These verbs refer to physical or mental actions. For example, run, swim, help, ignore, believe. State of verbs. Unlike action verbs, state of verbs refer to conditions or states of being. Transitive verbs. A transitive verb is a verb that requires one or more objects. Intransitive verbs. These are verbs that do not require a direct object. Linking verbs. These verbs connect the subject of the sentence to additional information about the subject.
Helping verbs, auxiliary verbs. These verbs extend the meaning of the base verb, help to form tenses, voices, moods, etc. Modal verbs. These verbs express necessity or possibility. Regular verbs. These are verbs that follow a regular conjugation pattern. Irregular verbs. These are verbs that do not follow the regular conjugation patterns. Phrasal verbs. These are idiomatic phrases consisting of a verb and another element, typically an adverb or a preposition. Infinitives. This is the base form of a verb, typically preceded by the word to. Each type of verb has its own rules and uses in English grammar. All right, so these are the types of the verbs that we have we have there in English, but we add mainly explain action verbs, linking verbs, and transitive verbs with details, like if you're explaining to a five-year-old child. No, 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 don't, don't answer at all. Explain action verbs, linking verbs, and transitive verbs in details as you're explaining to a five-year-old child. Okay. Okay. Sure. Let's imagine verbs as different types of monsters to make it fun and easy to understand. Action verbs. These are like the running monster. Just like how a monster might run, jump, or roar, action verbs are all about doing things. For example, in the sentence, the monster jumps over the castle, jumps is an action verb because it's something the monster is doing. Linking verbs, these are like the rainbow bridge monster. They don't do actions, but they connect or link things together. They're like a bridge that lets us describe things. For example, in the sentence, the monster is big and scary, is is a linking verb because it connects monster with big and scary. Transitive verbs, these are like the gift-giving monster. They always give something, an object, to someone else. For example, in the sentence, the monster gives the child a balloon, gives is a transitive verb because the monster is giving something, a balloon, to someone else, the child. Remember, every sentence needs a verb, just like every story needs a monster. And just like monsters can be different, verbs can be different too. Isn't give an action verb already? Yes, you're correct. The verb give is indeed an action verb because it represents an action that someone or something can do. However, when we say transitive verb, we're talking about a special type of action verb. Transitive verbs are action verbs that have an object to receive that action. So, in the sentence, the monster gives the child a balloon, gives is a transitive verb because the monster, the subject, is doing an action, giving, and there's a balloon, the object, that's receiving that action.
The child is the indirect object in this sentence. So, all transitive verbs are action verbs, but not all action verbs are transitive verbs. Some action verbs don't need an object to receive the action, and those are called intransitive verbs. All right. Uh, give examples of these verbs, the three kinds of verbs. Sure, I'd be happy to provide examples of different types of verbs. Here they are. Action verbs. These verbs express physical or mental actions. Example, the cat jumps over the fence. The action verb is jumps. Linking verb. Uh, give examples for the three types of verbs. Give examples. The linking. Sure, here are examples of three types of verbs. Action verbs. These verbs express physical or mental actions. Example. The cat jumps over the fence. The action verb is jumps. Linking verbs. These verbs connect the subject of a sentence to more information about the subject. Example. The sky is blue. The linking verb is is. Transitive verbs. These verbs require a direct object to complete their meaning. Example. She reads the book. The transitive verb is reads and the direct object is the book. Uh, give few examples for, uh, give at least five, five examples for each of these three verbs. Sure, here are five examples for each of the three types of verbs. Action verbs. These verbs express physical or mental actions. The dog barks loudly. She reads a book every night. He writes with a pen. They run in the park every morning. I love eating ice cream. Linking verbs. These verbs connect the subject of a sentence to more information about the subject. The cake smells delicious. You look tired today. The soup tastes salty. She seems happy about the news. The flowers are beautiful. Transitive verbs. These verbs require a direct object to complete their meaning. She reads the newspaper every morning. He drinks coffee with breakfast. They bought a new car yesterday. I love this song. You forgot your keys at home. All right. So these were the examples. Now the transitives are uh, what? This is an important piece of note that I may uh, just note for me down. The verbs, the action verbs, and the linking verb, and the transitive verbs. So they need an, uh, they require a direct object to complete their ex their meaning. So she reads uh, the book, as the book is receiving the action of this, and this is transmit the reading. The verb is uh, transferring this action to the book. So yes, these are now finished. Let's say let's say what well, look at each sentence and align the subject uh, the subject once and write the subject above it. Write is above it and align the verb 
twice write v about it above it and okay circle the object f uh, there is one and write u above it some sentences have more than one verb and object all right so let's see he works at a department store he is the subject one this is the subject so this is my youngest my youngest brother is in high school his own work at the same time in his high school who is in work the cat and the object okay let's ask about the object as well because this seems a little bit tricky as well what is the object in a sentence do all sentences have objects and what is the o no not all sentences have objects only sentences with transitive verbs require a direct object to complete their meaning for example, in the sentence, she reads the newspaper, reads is a transitive verb and the newspaper is the direct object. However, sentences with intransitive verbs do not require a direct object. For example, in the sentence, the baby cries, cries is an intransitive verb and there is no object. Similarly, sentences with linking verbs do not have objects. Instead, they have a subject complement that provides additional information about the subject. For example, in the sentence, the sky is blue is is a linking verb and blue is the subject complement. So, while many sentences do have objects, it's not a requirement for all sentences. My youngest brother is in his I school. What is the object in this sentence? In the sentence, my youngest brother is in a school, the object is not present. This is because the verb is in this sentence is a linking verb, not a transitive verb. Linking verbs do not take objects. Instead, they are followed by words or phrases that give more information about the subject of the sentence. In this case, in a school is a prepositional phrase that acts as the subject complement, giving more information about my youngest brother. So, there is no object in this sentence. All right, so we got to know this as well. Let's now find out which one contains. So this he works is the double, and this is the verb, at a department store. At a department store. So I'm saying this is a, a object. So this is object. 
he likes his job. He is the subject, likes his the verb, his job, but he doesn't like his boss. But doesn't like his boss. So his boss and his job are the objects. And this is also the verb. His job is easy and pays well. So this is a linking. So is job subject verb. No, no, no. His job is all subject. Is is verb easy and pays. So there's no object, this one. Pays well. This is also verb. There's no uh, object. Pays well. Who or whom, it doesn't answer. So it's just the easiest thing. Uh, this semester, he is talking, taking extra classes. Taking extra classes is subject verb taking extra classes and extra information about the person. What is he going to do? This is not an object, it doesn't answer who slash whom. He became a computer programmer at the age of 16. E subject, verb, a computer programmer at the age of 16. Okay, so he became a computer programmer at the age of 16. A computer programmer is the object. This is the object. This is the object. He speaks uh, and understands English very well. So he, subject, verb, speaks, understands English very well. Uh, so this is English, this is not the object. There is nobody showing here that who and whom it doesn't answer. Uh, one week on weekends, on weekends, he plays, he is the subject, plays the verb, socks with his friends. Okay, so this is the object what and whom it does answer. Uh, he plays with his friends, so Soxa. Okay, he doesn't have a friend yet, he. So Soxa is the object here. He doesn't have a friend yet. Subject, verb, have a friend yet. So doesn't have is the verb here, but all of it. A friend yet. So a friend. Oh, this is also an object. Let's, l let's read it 
uh, let's take a screenshot of this portion let's duplicate it first and we will see oh, are we found all of them right or wrong uh, let's test ourselves okay so this doesn't have now Help me with this. Help me with this. Sure, I'd be happy to help you with this worksheet. Here's how you can identify the subject, verb, and object in each sentence. She reads a book. Subject, S she. Verb, V reads. Object, O a book. The cat chases its tail. Subject, S the cat. Verb, V chases. Object, O oh, its tail. I am happy. Subject, SI. Verb, VM. Object, O oh, none, because am is a linking verb and happy is a subject You have taken completely different subjects, different sentences altogether. You did not answer the question in the worksheet. I apologize for the confusion. I'm unable to see the specific sentences on your worksheet. Could you please type out the sentences you'd like help with? I'd be happy to assist you in identifying the subjects, verbs, and objects in those sentences. Let's use board. Board is also a nice one, a better one sometimes in understanding images and those all things. Uh, Microsoft makes a fuss of it. It doesn't always appeal to me as nice. Solve this for me, please. Solve it for me, please.
separate subjects, objects, and verbs from the sentences. Separate subjects, objects, and verbs from the sentences. Okay, so let's see what Google did for us. To separate subjects, objects, and verbs from the subjects, we can use the following steps. 1. Identify the subject of the sentence. The subject is the person, place, or thing that is doing the action of the verb. 2. Identify the verb of the sentence. The verb is the action word in the sentence. 3. Identify the object of the sentence. The object is the person, place, or thing that is being acted upon by the verb. Once we have identified the subject, verb, and object of the sentence, we can separate them as follows. Subject, verb, object. My youngest brother is in high school. He watches TV and does his homework at the same time. Okay, so here I think this is much better now. Okay, so object, none of these link, none, because is this the linking verb and, and as I school, my brother is the youngest, so this is the subject. He works at a department store. Okay, so object is, uh, he works at a department. He watches as TV, TV is in work. Okay, so second there are three. Yeah, is in work. There are two objects. Let's see. The third one, okay, so what did I say? E works and none object. The third one, E works at a department store. Watches TV, does his own work, and works at a department store. How come there is no object in the department store? Because works is intransitive, intransitive verb as an intransitive verb. This is action, but not transitive. At a department store, not on the department store. Oh, okay, so we got this one wrong. 
he likes his job but he doesn't like his boss so his job and his boss this one we got right okay here uh, the fifth one job is boss the fourth one okay now see we the fifth one see the two verbs are correct uh, what about the fifth one he plays okay so is his job is easy and pays well okay so easy there is uh, none because it is 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 linking and uh, easy is subject complement and the verb is and the verb and linking verb and easy as a subject complement so it is a complement rather the fifth one the sixth is as semester is taking ex e this semester is taking extra classes okay so what did we say here uh, okay this is this semester is okay so e is she is this is a subject is this is the verb and taking extra classes uh, I think this is the object but we haven't denoted it as object so let's see what is here okay this semester yeah extra classes is an object whom or what is taking extra classes that is taking them okay he became okay he became a computer programmer at the age okay computer object none because uh, became is a linking verb and a computer programmer is the subject complement okay <coughs> so I took a computer programmer as the object how come uh, he speaks he speaks and understands English very well he speaks and understands English very well okay so it is e and s uh, e, e is subject speaks as verbs understands English very well <coughs> there's no object I have not written any object there so and understand understand is also a verb there are two verbs let's say he speaks speaks and understands a verb and object is English English is the object there the eight is the object what English okay we are wrong so many times again on weekends he plays soccer with his friends on weekends he plays so he plays soccer with his friends his friends I'm sure these are the, again the object or soccer is rather the object yeah I have written soccer as object so yeah soccer is the object and now he doesn't and the th uh -huh. okay the third one is he doesn't yet have a friend yet so friend is an object and doesn't is a verb and he is the subject let's say is it doesn't have yeah doesn't have is the verb uh, but let's say we got how many wrong we would ask the explanation eighth
If it is a thing, something, or someone that receives the, that receives the action, then it becomes an object. Otherwise, this becomes a subject complement. Uh, he became a computer programmer. So he became a computer programmer. That becomes a complement for him. Just give me a moment. I will be back. Okay, right back on my studies. So identifying this, I need some more practice even. Uh, as job is easy and pays well, so there is no object. And he likes his job, but doesn't like his boss, so his boss and his job with the object. He works at a department store. Works at a department store. How come uh, he works at a department store, doesn't have an object? Explain the third one. Why doesn't it have an object? Explain the third one. Why doesn't it have an object? In the sentence, he works at a department store, the verb works is an intransitive verb. Intransitive verbs don't require an object to complete their meaning. The phrase at a department store is a prepositional phrase that tells us where the action is happening, but it's not an object of the verb works. Objects typically receive the action of the verb or are somehow affected by it. For example, in the sentence, he reads a book, a book is the object because it's receiving the action of reading. But in our sentence, a department store isn't receiving or being affected by the action of working. It's just providing additional information about where the working is happening. That's why we say the sentence doesn't have an object. Okay. What about he works on the department store? What about he works on the department store? In the sentence, he works on the department store, the verb works is still an intransitive verb. The phrase on the department store is a prepositional phrase that provides more information about where or how the action is happening, but it's not an object of the verb works. 
objects are typically directly affected by the action of the verb. For example, in the sentence, he reads a book, a book is the object because it's directly receiving the action of reading. But in our sentence, the department store isn't directly receiving or being affected by the action of working. It's just providing additional information about where or how the working is happening. That's why we say the sentence doesn't have an object. However, if we change the sentence to, he works on improving the department store, then improving the department store becomes the object of the verb works on. This is because it's directly receiving the action of working. In this case, works on becomes a phrasal verb that does take an object. How come reads is a transitive verb? How do I know which verb is transitive and which verb is intransitive? Transitive and intransitive verbs are distinguished by whether they require an object to complete their meaning. Transitive verbs, these verbs require an object to complete their meaning. The action of a transitive verb is done to someone or something. Most verbs are transitive. Intransitive verbs, these verbs do not require an object to complete their meaning. The action doesn't go beyond the verb. For example, in the sentence, the baby cries, cries is an intransitive verb and there is no object. It's important to note that many verbs can be both transitive and intransitive, depending on how they are used in a sentence. For example, the verb run is intransitive in he runs, but transitive in he runs a restaurant. A good way to test if a verb is transitive is to try to pass the action to an object. For instance, in the sentence he sings, if you can pass the action to an object and say, he sings a song, then sings can be used as a transitive verb. If you can't add an object, then the verb is likely intransitive. All right, there is, there is difficulty this, to this topic. Let's, let's go on. Okay, work alone uh, with a partner. Uh, find uh, seven mistakes, subjects and verbs in the paragraph. Make corrections. All right. Uh, so we are about to make some corrections. Uh, my friend Laurie, of a bad habit, okay, has a bad habit. He never on time to anything. He is. He is never on time on anything to anything. He arrives ten minutes late everywhere. Laurie always Laurie has has always an excuse. I missed the bus. My alarm clock didn't ring. My watch stopped. 
uses he okay uses each excuse at least twice a week okay so here e he uses uh, each excuse at least twice a week i know them all Whenever Lori rushes in, ten minutes late, rushes in ten minutes late, of course, and starts to say, sorry, I'm late, but I, I can finish the sentence for him. However, I recently discovered a new strategy. If the movie starts at 7, I'll tell Larry it starts at 6.45. Then he... Then he is... Then he will... Early, Laurie's bad habit has is not a problem for me any longer. Is I will tell Laurie it starts at seven. Then he will. He will be early. Laurie's bad habit is not a problem for me any longer. I will tell Laurie it starts. Okay, so how many we found? One, two, three, four, five, six. Got it. There are four basic sentence structures in English. One simple, two compound, and three complex, and four compound complex. There are four basic sentences. Okay, simple, compound, complex, and compound complex. In this chapter, you will learn about simple sentences. Okay, simple sentences. Let's go on. I don't think we can finish this chapter today. Let's not rush ourselves, okay? We will we will do some the simple sentence as well. A simple sentence is uh, a sentence that has one subject per pair. Okay, so these are simple sentences. My brother and I are completely different okay uh, consisting of a word noun phrase or a subject or it may be compound that is it may consist of two or more subjects nouns phrases or joined by connecting words uh, like and or Okay, so these are compound. Maria uh, or Rita will meet at the airport. They are compound. The verb uh, in a simple sentence may also be compound. It may consist of a two or more uh, verb forms joined by Uh, it may consist of two or more verbs, forms joined by connecting words uh, such as and and or 
and or or however there are simple sentences because they are simple sen sentences because they have only one subject per pair okay They laughed and cried at the same time. Studies uh, study the simple sentence in the left column and their st their patterns in the right column they there are many variations but each sentence has only one sv pair subject verb pair my younger sister speaks english well so subject and verb pair subject subject ssv sSVV Okay, so we have SVV. My brother doesn't speak or write English well. So these are the simple sentences. Analyzing your writing for verbs. Here are some simple rules uh, to follow when you analyze your writing for verbs. Rules. Label two and three words uh, verb forms as a single verb as studying as been living once as swimming label only uh, main verb uh, forms as As verbs, do not label the infinitives that have verbs forms which begin with to. Do not label verb forms that are used as adjective or nouns. He is swimming. And the hotel swimming pool. Okay, so that is incorrect. To live there is incorrect, not a verb, an infinitive. To live is infinitive. Assuming here is verb, but here is uh, the second is no. Uh, practice eight. So we have the practice eight. My grandfather is old. Okay, read the paragraph, underline each subject once and write S above it. Underline each verb twice and write V above it. Okay, so my grandfather is old, uh, old in, is old in years but young in spirit. Every day he swims and swims a mile and works in his garden. He Okay, let's read it out loud then. Okay. He He is subject and my grandmother is also subject have as verb four children and ten grandchildren okay so this is the verb my grandfather okay this is s loves verb parties and invites this is also verb our entire family to his house for a big dinner on his birthday okay so this is one. all 20 of us eat and all 20 of us this is subject eat is verb and tell is verb stories 
half the night. My grandfather never gets tired. My grandfather is the subject again and gets okay verb tired and is always the last to go to bed okay go is again verb is is also okay to go to bed is not a verb because to go is an infinitive form and to bed is also okay all right so verb is there on his last birthday on his last birthday is the subject my brothers okay no this is not the subject at all my brothers is the subject and I is the subject gave him is the verb a present we put okay we subject verb put our money together and bought bought is the verb him a video game system Now he invites, he is the subject, invite is the verb, to his house every weekend. Invites us to his house every weekend to play video games with him. Play. Okay, to play. To play is an infinitive form again. This is not video games with him. So this is it. My grandfather is a subject never seems old to me. Verb. Okay. Right. Right for each sentence in part A. So I think I'm not going to do that. It's VV, it's says VV. Okay, so here again. Using simple sentences pattern. Uh, about your family and friends. Write simple sentences about your family and friends. Use each of these pattern the last at least at least once okay so my my younger brother Jonathan goes to University of Washington and works part-time I'm studying and teaching English English okay so this is I study English in the morning and teach math in evening in the evening 
so one okay the second so this is SVV I finished SVV SSVV okay my sis ter and I my sister and I uh do the the chose together together and read separately so I did read uh, okay separately do chores together okay so I did SVV also finished well, mine is remained SSVV my mother and my brother my brother of my brother of my mother and my brother have arrived at home okay so this is SSV and SV so I'm my grand father is a happy person okay six says let's say my father teaches maths okay so okay root is vv is this vv okay th this is already we did it and we just shoot it there so no more necessities of the same thing anymore okay connecting words and or and and or I can see these connecting sentences and connecting word and and or and joins two two or more similar things in a in a affirmative sentences in affirmative sentences I like Chinese and Italian food okay we have class on Monday, Wednesday and Friday or connects two or more similar things in a negative sentence I don't like warm milk or cold coffee oh, we don't have class on Tuesdays or Thursdays or also connects two or more choices or alternatives okay I would like to go to London Rome or Paris on the next vacation I cannot go to all of the, pl the three places I will choose one my father or my mother will meet me at the airport both of them are not coming one of them will come compare my father and my mother will meet 
me at the airport. Okay, so these are. This means that both my parents are coming to the airport. Okay, so I can speak and understand English. I can't speak Tagalog or Vietnamese. My mother is proud of my sister and me. Would you like to listen to music or watch? Or watch a movie? You can walk there, you can walk there or take the bus. My uncle, a talented artist, paints and paints and makes sculptures. and makes sculptures. Does your English class meet on Monday, Tuesday? Or Friday? Uh, 